In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this really beautiful ranunculus flower. These are notoriously tricky to get right and I have worked on different techniques to finally achieve this design. We will also finish the flower with this really lovely paper calyx detail at the end. Remember subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell to be in the know when a new video goes live. Let's jump in. I'll be colouring my petal paste with the colour Living Coral cream and the centre shall be a bitter lemon. I'll use my ranunculus cutter set. You can see these are similar to a rose petal cutter but they're a little bit more narrow and the width at the top is wider. I'll pop the brand of cutter set in the video description box for you. You'll need edible glue and a paintbrush, a non-stick rolling pin, cornstarch and these peony veiners are fantastic to use to get all that detail into your petals. Here I have three lots of my petal paste coloured with my three different colours and I have hot glued my 18 gauge wire into a 3.5 cm styrofoam ball. Now I'm marking the top where I want to make a small hole and I'll go in with an X-Acto knife and just cut this out. It doesn't have to be perfect and you really don't want to go too deep, just about 3 millimetres deep. So I'm just kind of digging out that styrofoam there. And this is where we're going to put our centre. So I'm taking my bitter lemon florist paste that I've coloured and I just want to roll this into a ball and just take a tiny bit off because it's a little bit too big here. We're just making like a little stamen so I'm kind of just rolling that and then I want to slightly taper the end so that it has a little bit more of a kind of boxy look. That's probably the best way I can explain it. But you're just kind of pinching that and making this shape so that you can pop that in. It won't matter too much because you're not really going to see this, um, but if you were to do competition work, then you might want to be a little bit more exact with the shape. So I'm going in with some edible glue, this is just CMC powder mixed in with hot water and a little bit of vinegar to stop it from deteriorating. And I'm just going to pop the centre in there and I'm just taking this little tool from, um, I think it's the, oh Sugar Works, yeah these soft tools are so great, they're used for modelling and I'm just going to kind of just help make sure that sticks down at the bottom. But that's it, really simple. And that's the start. So I'll just pop that into a piece of styrofoam just so I can move on to the next step. So I'm taking my cream coloured petal paste, I'm rolling this out and I want to cut about four to five of these petals. So taking the smaller cutter in my set we'll start to cut these out. Don't worry about little things like that at this stage if you've kind of cut a bit too close to the edge and there's a little hole because you're really not going to see that so I wouldn't worry. So I've gone in with six and I think seven would be a good number for this. When I make my flowers I do try and work quite organically so when I do make the petals I won't always have a set number in my head. I just like to layer things up and see how they look and just work like that because nothing in nature is completely exact or symmetrical. So you'll see with my tutorials it's really just about getting used to the tools, used to the shape of the flower and then getting really creative and just working with your imagination and what you feel is right when you start to build these things up. So I'm using my veiner now, I don't actually need to use cornstarch but if you work somewhere where it's quite humid then you might want to put a little bit of cornstarch on the veiner just to stop your petal paste from sticking. And then I can actually put about three in here at the same time just to speed things up a bit. 
I'm using the Squire's Kitchen Sugar Florist Paste because this one's just really brilliant to work with and a little drier so it doesn't stick so much when you're working with it. But definitely if you have a more, like a softer Sugar Florist Paste, then you might find yourself needing to use cornstarch quite a lot when you're working. So I've pressed that veiner down, made my little markings in each of my petals. And I'll go again. I have this really cool matte that I can slide all my petals under when I'm not working on them and that just makes sure they don't dry out too much before I start to assemble my flower. I'll put a link below with everything that I'm using and where I purchase some of these products as well. So I'm just going in with my edible glue and I just want to add a little bit of glue just to the bottom. I actually added a bit too much here so you really want to do, use this quite sparingly because it can just get really sticky. So just be quite careful with that. And then you'll see what I'm doing is I'm laying this petal slightly over the centre of the stamen. So you don't want to see the styrofoam and you don't want to see any of that edging. We're just going to start to cup that over very gently and keeping the top of that petal quite straight. Again, I'm going to like layer this halfway over the first petal and then halfway onto the styrofoam ball. And kind of move that up a little bit and then I'm going to leave the side of that petal open so that I can tuck the next one underneath just like that and then we'll do the same again and this I find when I'm making these is the most important step if you get this right then it makes it a lot easier for the rest of the flower to take shape but when you don't do this bit and overlap those petals and get them pushed right into the centre, that is when your ranunculus starts to look a bit like an eyeball. So there again, I've just kind of laid that underneath and we're curving those round. Now some ranunculus flowers that I used to make just looked super creepy to me. So I've really tried to perfect my final design here. So again I'm just taking my next set and I'm just going to layer that round but this time it's going to be a tiny bit lower than that first petal that's been in, you'll see. So we're starting to do the next layers lower down slightly underneath the first petal so that our flower really starts to take shape. So just tucking that one halfway under the first one making sure that's all secure down and then I'll just stretch that one down a little bit and now I'll slightly pull these at an angle so whereas before they were very like straight against the edge I'm going to pull these slightly downwards as I'm working on them so just tucking that one round over there you can ruffle the edges of these petals before you add them if you want to um, because there's so many petals here and because the veiner does tend to soften them and I do cut these or roll these out very thin I don't really feel like it's necessary but again if you're doing competition work then you might want to take the time to add that detail I'm just going to open up my center a little bit and just move these petals out so it just looks a little bit more realistic And there we go, so that's the centre done. So I'm going to go in with the same set. That's still my smaller cutter. So I started off with the cream layer and now I'm going to go in with my coral. This isn't a super bright coral because we're going to dust this flower at the end as well. Again, I'll put in the description box the number of petals that I did for each layer as well if you need a real like exact count just to help you out. So I'll just put these back into my peony veiner and press that down. And then we'll start building up the next layer. Again, I'm just going to brush in some edible glue. And what I want to do is I want to start where I finish. So where the last two petals were placed... I want to go around 
and then start to build up again. And this time I'm going to angle mine very slightly downwards. And as you can see here, it's just a slight curve. And then I'll just press those in a little bit too, just to get the shape again. And I'll just take my X-Acto knife and just pull that side up so we can then tuck the next petal around. Just going to go in again, a little bit of edible glue, and then we'll just tuck that under this side and we just keep doing the same thing around for the first and second layer and there's so many variations of a ranunculus flower um, so you can start to open these up a lot more as we go around open the petals up a lot more it's really just about being very creative in the design and just doing what feels right to you I think making sugar flowers should just be a fun process. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to make it perfect because then you'll just end up with your own signature style which would be really lovely. So I'm just tucking that one under there and again don't worry if there's like a little crack or a split when you're working because no one's going to see this bit and if you do get little splits in the top of the petals that you can see well then that will just make it look really realistic. Just going to keep pulling those petals out and going around with the next layer. And then just making sure you're like tucking the bottom of those petals underneath so they're secure to the bottom of the styrofoam ball. That's our first layer done. Just tuck the pull it bit out a little bit and then I'm gonna go on and do the second layer. So that's five petals for that layer. So this one's going to be slightly lower than the last layer we've put on and then we're going to just tuck that round again on the seam where we finished with our last set. So I'm just going to leave that side open and then we'll go round again. The great thing about using the styrofoam ball is that it makes for a lighter flower head. So I use this technique with a lot of my bigger flowers. So like your Juliet Rose and an Olivia Rose. A lot of the David Austin breeds. Um, I will use a styrofoam ball because when you start using fondant or sugar paste to start your centres off, it already adds such a lot of weight to that flower. So I'm just going around again with the next layer and then I'm going to upsize to a medium petal cutter once we finalize this layer. And we'll start adding this one lower and it's just the same idea it's the same repetition of just going round and round with the next set of petals so once you finish one layer you'll go down into the well you'll go up into the next set and then we'll make more petals and we'll layer those a slightly lower than the last set of petals and just keep curving those around
adding them at a very slight angle downwards so you get that really natural look and it starts to look as if your ranunculus is about to open up. So you can see now I'm just adding this a little bit lower here and we want to start covering up the bottom of that styrofoam ball that's still exposed. Now this layer I'm going to start to allow the edges of those flower petals to slightly stick outwards as well. I'm just going to pull those out slightly and let them sit at an angle. And again you can open these up as much as you want depending on the design that you're going for. I'm still going to keep my ranunculus quite closed just because that's the style that I like. And we'll just tuck the next one into there and start to cover up the bottom of that styrofoam ball. It does take some time to do this, so just have some patience and enjoy the process. Put some music on and you will start to get quicker the more, the more that you make these as well. And you find if you kind of squeeze the bottom as you're going, they will start to just take their own shape as well, which can be really lovely. Okay, so we're going to go in with the largest cutter in the set, and we're going to make about seven petals for the final row on this flower. Exactly the same method as before, but these will be layered a little bit lower than the last row. and we're just covering up the bottom of that styrofoam ball. So you can stretch these round a little bit. It covers more surface area and these petals will always be larger than the rest. And then just again, halfway underneath the first petal that you've placed, we'll tuck in the next one in the row. Just make sure those are all secured down really well and especially underneath onto the styrofoam that the bottom of the petal is stuck to the base. And again just adding a little bit more glue and just finishing off this flower. You can stretch the paste down a little bit just to cover any of the white that you see at the bottom and then we'll just keep tucking that in around. So I'm just going to add a few more of the petals, just lowering those ones again to just cover up the base.
and then adding in the final two. And this should be slightly lower and then it will cover up the very bottom of the ball. And there we go. So what you can do is you can add a little calyx to the bottom of this ranuncular flower if you like. You can just cut those out and slide those onto the bottom and that will add a little bit of greenery. I'm going to go in and just do this with some florist paper. So I'm going in with some florist tape. I am using the green florist tape. And um, before I've stretched the tape, I actually just want to cut a piece into three pieces and then using these really cool um, sewing scissors because they're really nice and sharp and small so you can add a lot of detail in your sugar florist work. I'm just cutting the ends of each tape into a triangle. And just apologies for any background noise at the moment. Um, as I'm filming this, it has become the bin or trash collection day and so it's a little bit noisy outside. Hopefully you can hear me over this tutorial. So I'm just folding each of these in half, just at the top, just to make this really nice little indentation and then it looks like a leaf. And that will sit really nicely underneath the flower when it's finished. But I absolutely love this effect on a flower in place of making sugar flower calyx. I just think this adds a lot of movement and it looks really lovely. So I'm just pulling the bottom to activate the stickiness on this tape. And then we're going to take the bottom and just wrap that around the, bot well, the bottom of the flower but the top of the wire. So just using the warmth of your fingers, place that round the bottom of the wire and then just start to twist. But then using your left hand, kind of pull the edge of the leaf up at an angle so that it sits upwards on the flower here. Hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of see in the video how I'm doing this. And then we'll do this again with the other piece of tape, trying to get it to lay at the opposite side of the flower. So I'm just pulling that so it's nice and sticky again. And then where I started with the last piece of florist tape, I'm going to just go around again and spin that round so that it sticks really nicely and then kind of pull that leaf upwards. And then just with the final one, we'll do that again. And attach that. And then what we want to do is just add our florist tape to the remainder of the wire and just twist that down just to finish this flower off. And then we'll go in and add some color to really bring out all the detail in this ranunculus and make it look really realistic. So just if you haven't done this before with your flowers, it's just taking the tape, pulling it to activate the stickiness and then taking that sticky side and then just using the warmth of your fingers to wrap that all the way down the wire. And there you go. That finishes off the stem for you. So let's go in now and add some colour to really make this pop. So I'm going in with a vine green. Um, these petal dust are from Squire's Kitchen and I believe Sugar Flare. So just going with an edible dust and I'm going to just use that to go right into the center using a dry paintbrush and just dust in the stamen. 
and like let that color drag up a little bit and touch the edge of the first set of petals you should really do this on a flower that has set up overnight so leave your florist paste to dry out um, mine is nearly there you can still see it's a little bit soft but just for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just working on it a bit sooner than maybe I should um, it didn't really affect it too much because I was working with the Squire's Kitchen Sugar Florist Paste and that dries up very quickly but I do think sometimes it is better just to wait for everything to dry out so I'm going in with some cream colour again and we're just going to start to dust that over the next layer of petals and that just helps enhance everything and make it look more realistic another reason you probably want to wait for your flower to set up is to make sure all that edible glue has set up and there's no remnants of it because if there's some glue that's still wet then when you take your paintbrush through with your dry petal paste or petal dust that colour will dry, get really sticky and start to leave marks all over your flower which just doesn't look so great. So again I'm just going in and dusting that all over using a different paintbrush so that I don't start mixing in the colours too much with each other. And then I've gone in with this peach colour. It looks quite pinky on the camera but it is more of a peach colour because I want that coral effect on my ranunculus. And then just going in with a flat head dry paintbrush. I just find the flathead ones do work better to cover those petals. I'm going to just start dusting this downward and making sure I'm building up that colour just on the very edges of the petals. The colour will start to collect on the edge of the petal and then dragging it down the rest. Um, and the thing is, you just it's kind of like a subtle hint. I'm just adding a little bit of tone here and there all over the flower. You're not literally painting every single petal you can if you wish to and if you really want to make that color a lot more intense then go for it but it's just kind of adding a sheen and so that when the light hits this flower at different angles you'll get different tones and that's what makes it look really realistic and then once you've done this go ahead and um, heat the kettle or if you have a um, specialist steamer for flowers you know get that steam going and then just slightly put the flower head into the steam for a few seconds and that will set the colour. You don't have to do this but it does finish these flowers off quite nicely. If you would like to build your skills further you can find more of my tutorials over on the Skillshare platform. I'll pop a freebie link below. These classes are longer, more detailed and I take you through how to master filler flowers for your cake displays as well as a bridal cake topper and a festive flower. Please always pop a comment below on suggestions of flowers that you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you on my next video tutorial.